Foods has just teamed up with food tech startup Notco to create a joint venture that's going to develop plant-based products across multiple categories. I caught up with Matthias Muchnik, Chief Executive at Notco, to find out more about how the partnership came about and when we might see those dairy-free craft singles hit the market. Okay, so this is probably more of a question for Kraft Heinz than for you, but cut to the chase. They're a huge CPG company with an R&D team, established brand in plant-based meat. They've also developed vegan versions of mac and cheese. You know, why do they need to get into bed with a startup, you know, even a cool one like Notco? You know? Well, I would say the most important factor here is what we can bring together, you know, in a joint venture. I think, you know, the agility of Notco, the speed, the know-how of the products and the quality of the products really caught their attention. I mean, remember, Elaine, that we've been operating this company for six years. We're now present in eight different countries, operating five different categories of products, getting market share that are significant in every market, right? And so from them, their perspective is like, how can we elevate what Notco is bringing with scale, with distribution, with mass market, you know, penetration? How can we make this plant-based, you know, industry, uh, uh, you know, probably an industry we've never seen before, you know, in terms of reach? So I think we both bring to the table something very important. They bring their familiarity of their brands. You know, Philadelphia cream cheese is something that, you know, has a market penetration of around, you know, 70% in American households, right? Putting a plant-based version of that in the market can really move the needle in terms of market penetration of the plant-based industry as well. So are these going to be co-branded products? Yes. 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 Okay. So stepping back a bit, you know, how did this collaboration come about in the first place? And, you know, how long have you been talking to Kraft Heinz? Well, this collaboration, I would say, took from the very beginning, like as an approach of let's do something together. We have no idea what it is, but let's do something together uh, was 10 months ago. So we took 10 months to really kind of navigate the terms, navigate, you know, the ways of working, what's the product, what are the categories and so on and so forth. So 10 months, I would say, but we know each other from, you know, the, the past as well. We, I mean, this, this relationships never happen from one day to another. You start talking, you're, you're presenting to their leadership team, you, they understand what you do. So it's something that you navigate throughout, you know, years, but it took us 10 months to get here. So how is the joint venture going to work in practice? I understand the Kraft Heinz Not Company will be led by Lucho Lopez May, and he's currently running your North American operation, right? So, um, but it's going to be based in Chicago and operate under the control of Kraft Heinz. So what yeah. does that mean? So let's say that what we wanted to do is to really bring together something that would be operated under the agility as well of not go with the scale of Kraft Heinz, right? So. The, the reason why Lucho is transitioning from the North American you know, overview operations of Notco to the JV is because basically we want to lead that way into the agility of a startup. We don't want to lose that, right? You know, so this is going to be operating the commercial execution in Chicago, exactly in the headquarters of Kraft Heinz. But just to leverage what they have in the Kraft Heinz standalone to really elevate what the Kraft Heinz Notco can actually do and on the other side we'll have our office in san francisco that is managing all of you know the r d you know the more you know, the product development side and the, you know the technology right so that's why we divided a little bit you know the know-how of what we need in every place that's supposed to be right so what about like can you say more about what you might work on first i don't know cheese hot dogs cream cheese you know what might we see first? I mean, I, we cannot say anything about the rollout you know of the products we cannot say what product is what geography but what we're definitely saying is that we're going to launch a product this year okay okay so i just want to go back to something that comes up all the time in this space there's a lot of cynicism around the whole plant-based movement is it over height you know is there a ceiling and have we reached it yet yes. you know what is it that you're bringing that you know attracted a, a large CPG company like Kraft Heinz? What is it about your technology or your know-how that is so interesting to them? So to us, I think we've, I mean, everyone in the plant-based world is trying to do practically the same thing. So we want to take the animal out of the equation. It's all about the sustainability. It's moving the needle of the use of resources to create nutrition for this growing population. Like we, we like the objectives are kind of similar. Now we've chosen different paths. You know, in our case, we've chosen artificial intelligence, you know, and, and the combination of science and human knowledge to really go there faster and achieve, you know, better scale. So I think what Kraft Heinz actually, you know, 
their approach was, guys, you do this in a way that together with our you know, strengths, we can really create a plant-based industry as we never saw before. In terms of market penetration, in terms of like understanding that we can create market shares that are significant out there, that would definitely move the needle in the overall, you know, you know, sustainability world, right? There are a lot of companies um, now developing new kind of emerging technologies, animal-free technologies, where they're making real dairy proteins or real meat flavors, um, you know, in fermentation tanks or through a genetically engineered plants, that kind of thing. Is it your view that we can reverse every animal product entirely and make, you know, recreate it with plants? Or are there some things you just can't do without an animal protein? Well, we, at Notco, we haven't reached that, you know, that problem yet. We probably are going to face it if we're trying to do a steak or more complex, you know, um, matrices of products that are animal-based. We definitely have some challenges. Still, the, the plant-based industry, it started to operate and develop the technology only 10, 10 years ago, really, like really, really applying new technologies and bringing you know, innovation to the category. So I would say we haven't reached that point yet. I think we will. And we're definitely open also to understand other categories of technologies, right? It's not only artificial intelligence. You have, you know, precision fermentation. You have cellular agriculture. You, like there's many other things. Are we close to some of them? No, not at all. I mean, this is about the consumer at the end of the day. Like sometimes we, we get tangled in like scientific conversations because we love science, because we're dealing with technology and science all the time. But sometimes we forget that we need to convince a consumer. Is the consumer going to really, really adopt a product that is animal free? Do they care? Who cares? Right? That's a very interesting question to ask ourselves if we really want to move the needle. So I want to ask about cheese, finally. Um, you've got products on the market. You've got the Not Burger that you're launching at this show. You've already got Not Milk on sale in the US. You've got other products in other markets. What about cheese? Do you have a cheese product on the market? And, you know, could we see a, you know, craft processed cheese slice, you know, with Not Co technology anytime soon? Or is that a really tough nut to crack? Well, again, I cannot say what we're working <laughs> on, but definitely cheese and fermented products to us are one of the biggest, biggest you know, categories that need a lot of innovation and help. I mean, plant-based is so far away from what animal-based is. And that's that's a shame because what we want to do as, as an industry itself, we want to change things, right? And you cannot change, especially when you're disregarding the number one driver of consumption in this category, which is indulgence, right? You add it on pizza, you put it on sandwiches, you put it on salads. Like you really want to get, you know, a very good tasting, you know, and functional product. You want it to melt, you want it to brown, like so many things that today the plant based is not helping a lot to kind of like taking the animal out of the equation in the mass market perspective. So what are we doing? 100% focus on fermented products. 100% because that needs innovation, new technologies and a good product.